We've also got some calls out from Goldman Sachs and the analyst team over there on the semiconductor industry downgrading Intel to a cell and adding Xilinx to the firm's conviction buy list. Talk about a barbell buy sell long short idea. Jim, you own Intel. What do you think of a cell rating? Yeah, that seems a little bit dramatic to me. Now, listen, Intel, yes. the last several quarters, it's been easy to hate Intel going into the quarter. And then, frankly, they've outperformed. And I would expect the same thing here. I wonder if the analyst is a little bit worried about the pending loss of Apple's business. Hey, that, you know, that is meaningful. But outside of Apple, Intel has a number of irons in the fire. Their overall business is growing as overall computing power grows. And they're the second biggest chip company in the world with great margins that come from being such of a size. So I, I really like Intel here. I wouldn't sell it on this news. All right, so Joe Terranova, we have you back, I think. Can you hear me now? I could hear you now. now. Good. So, so how about Intel? W what do you think of a sell rating on Intel? You know what the problem is with Intel, Dom? It's not galloping higher on a daily basis with strong momentum behind it. And that's, that's really the issue uh, that people have with Intel. To Jim's point, this is a quality company. It's cheap on a valuation basis, $250 billion. The report earnings at the end of the July. Why not give consideration if you have been blessed with owning these uh, momentum technology names? And as I described earlier in the show, you're not comfortable with the gains that you currently have given uh, your concurrent position. Why not reduce the size of them and buy a quality company like Intel? And if we do see the recovery that the market uh, seems to be telegraphing, particularly for the enterprise space, that is exactly where Intel will benefit. Listen, to be nourished, sometimes you have to eat something that doesn't taste good at the moment. Intel is a great example of that. But longer term, it's offering you the exact diversification in the sector you want to be in, which is technology that will reward you longer term. You know who doesn't find chips appetizing at all? Tortilla, potato, or otherwise? It's Shannon Sakocha. <laughs> Shannon, you don't own any <laughs> semiconductors anymore at all. Why not? I, I actually think it's, um, you know, for me, I think that there's still a lot to be uh, shaken out here. I think that there are some overpriced semiconductors. I actually, um, Josh talks about this all the time. I think semis are a cyclical trade. And I think if you want to participate in semis right now, I, you know, I'd buy an ETF. I'd buy a basket of them. And I think that there you can, you know, balance your risk to Joe's point. Uh, but right now, you know, I'd love to buy another semi. I think that those, there probably would be another opportunity for me to do so. Um, but right now, if I wanted to get a play there, I would, I would do more of a thematic play and buy a basket. All yeah. right. So, so the fund approach there. John Najarian, I turn to you because I want to pivot towards the positivity side of this, and that's Xilinx. It's a conviction buy. What do you think about the conviction mm -hmm. buy at Xilinx? And, and is, is that the chip stock that you think you would want to favor in, in this kind of universe that we're talking about? I don't disagree with it, Dom. Um, I am not in Xilinx right now. I'm in Micron. Um, and I know that's DRAM more than this kind of chip that we're talking about. But um, I am uh, a big fan of KLAC 10 core and applied materials, AMAT. Um, don't own those either right now, Dom. So I, I'm a little bit leaning towards Shannon. I, I owned Micron just because of a momentum trade. Um, it's the only chip stock that I own right now. Um, but Xilinx, yeah, uh, of all of those, I guess Xilinx would be the first one that I'd jump back into, but I'm not in it right now, Dom. Jim Labenthal, Xilinx, what do you think? Is this a, is this a stock that you put on a shopping list at all? I, definitely it is. And, and here's why. These smaller chip companies, when the cycle is going well, as apparently the stock market is saying it is, they, they get a boost in incremental margins from the smallest amount of revenue growth. Um, and that's why you see these things happen with a higher beta than something like an Intel. So I like this call. I think that, uh, you know, th this can shine through along with the rest of the chips. I don't think you have to sell one to go buy Xilinx. All right. So the takes there on the chip sector, it seemed to be varied with our investment committee today. Thank you guys very much for that.